Hello, hello, hello. Welcome hello. back, everybody. Welcome back to Free Flow. I nearly forgot what it was called. <laughs> free Flow. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Episode three in a summer. Um, one day I will have like a snazzy intro outro, but for now, that's what you get. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome. So um, my name is Sorsha and I'm here with my cousin Julia. If you don't know who we are and you want a little bit more info, check out episode one where we introduce ourselves. Like I say, one day I'll have a more snappy, succinct thing. I think, Julia, that'll pre-record and just have it on everything. But for now, we're, we're, we're moving with what we got. We're doing that <laughs> messy action because uh, ADHD perfectionism is real and uh, I am actively countering that <laughs> word <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah guys so we're, today we're going to talk about um in a summer and um yeah. i guess we'll just open julia we like to just do a little cycle day check in i always forget to look at the moon when i do this so i'm really sorry if anyone's using the moon um one day i'll remember i barely remember to check my own like where i'm at on the day because like the whole day <laughs> passed and i'm like what day am i on again um so if you're using the moon if you don't have a bleed and you can take a little look online and just see what moon day it is um but generally uh new moon is day one and uh we had a new moon i think it was last week last thursday so probably around day seven day eight i think um if you're following with the moon um julia what day of your cycle are you on today? yes so i actually have my little cycle book here <laughs> mm -hmm. we keep forgetting, so we keep forgetting every time we come to record and i'm like what is it <laughs> yeah uh so i'm on on day 23 mm -hmm. um and so i'm mo very much in in a autumn you're in scum and in, in uh, autumn i'm <laughs> i am really in my little nest here yeah um Yes, and I'll probably go into winter at the start of next week. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm Julia's very kind of yeah in in kind of slow slow the old roll mode, um, mm -hmm. and I am like opposite that. I'm I'm on day twelve, and I'm like it's really hard to sit still. I'm definitely like earlier today. I was like pretty sure it's in a summer. <laughs> in a summer is a go go. So I just felt it's just been hard to like sit still. I've been a bit like oh, moving around. I've, moved, I've worked from a few different rooms today. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like I would say for me, I'd say actually it feels like day one of in a summer. So I feel like I'm yeah, kind of right. through the, the crossover days. And um, yeah, feeling quite energized. Um, mm. So yeah, so we're quite intrigued as well. We were saying at the beginning, just before we started film, recording, filming, that uh, we end up having kind of little catchphrases for each each inner season. Um, so yeah. if you listened to uh, if you listened to Inner Winter, you would have heard the uh, rest is radical, and then we had Inner Spring, which was um, was it be ten practice tenderness, be tender with yourself, be tender with yourself. Yes, oh so yummy. Um, I think we think in autumn is going to be slow your roll and uh, we're kind of intrigued to see what in the summer comes up. Julia's quite good at listening to my rambling and uh, <laughs> what a phrase that I use. <laughs> Great. So I'm kind of intrigued to see what's going to fly out of my mouth for in the summer really. <laughs> how it goes. Yeah it usually comes it usually yeah. comes to something you say that really resonates mm. in the session I have to say and then I'm like Oh my gosh, that's the message for this that's season. I love it. So, um, yeah. So yeah. So I guess um in a in a summer, if I glance over here, I've got my little my little notes up. So um in a summer is um ovulation. So either you are about, about to ovulate or you're ovulating or you've just ovulated. Um so we're not kind of in the, the nice slowdown roll bit yeah of um in a in an autumn. So yeah, it's just kind of during the ovulation time. And I think off the top of my head, because I was reading about this the other week, and I think it is about, I think uh, the I think the ovulation window, if you like, or ovulation could be sort of between like two, is it two to five days? I might also be getting confused with the, the fertile window. I think it tends to, I think the fertile window is about six, approximately six days every cycle. Um, because I was always like, I'm fertile every single day. Um, so that's <laughs> something important to unpack in, a, in another episode. 
Um, so yeah, yeah, so it can, you know, the length of it varies a little bit. And Julia, you, yeah. because you come at this with, like a lion, yeah. you come at this with, um, from a, a kind of, a, um, what's the word? Natural side. Fam. Yes. Oh, fam, yeah. yeah the, the facility awareness method. So that's kind of your, your lens of looking through this. So um, yeah. off the top of my head, and I, I actually do temp every morning, but I've been sleeping with the window open. So my temperature has been a little bit different. So it's been cooler in the mornings at the moment. Oh. My, my attic room like, is like an oven. So um, I am curious, but I have a feeling that um, I think with ovulation, am I correct in thinking that the temperature goes up a little bit? I feel like it kind of rises and then it dips a little bit. Um, and I think yeah. you, you probably know, because I know that you actively yeah. practice that. Yeah. I do. Yes. So what what hap what usually happens pre ovulation is you get that egg white. You're like mm. your um, discharge goes egg white. Um, it's a really slip. Oh, Julia, breaking up a little bit. Oh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Can you now? Oh. Yeah. Am I yeah, I'll edit. I'll probably edit it out a little bit when we do the when I do the editing. But don't don't worry. Julia's got we, oh, okay. we, have, we have got the best connection. So if it if it yeah. fades out a little Apologies. bit, good. Yeah, so <laughs> it kind of has that. We've got the egg white. We've got the egg white vibe. Yeah. So that happens pre ovulation, and that's the like that's the stuff that takes the sperm straight to the egg. That's oh, like that slippery little sucker. Yeah. Like that's the highway like to highway for sperm. <laughs> yeah. I love the way like, highway, highway, not highway to sperm. Down. Yeah. <laughs> highway for sperm. Maybe that will be in the summer. Highway, highway to, to sperm. sperm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then, mm. if you're taking your temperature, so if I look at mine, for example, I was um the. 36.4 because you have to you have to take your temperature with one decimal place because that's yeah. how small the change is um yeah so i was 36.4 um 36.2 oh, <laughs> and then on the day that you ovulate mm -hmm. your temperature goes up and it goes up by at least two decimal points Oh, I didn't know about that's, the two decimal points. Interesting. Yeah. So that's how you know you've ovulated. And then three days later, you are infertile until your period starts. Mm, okay. um, which is, it blew my mind the mm. first time I learned this. I was like, what? Um, so yeah. So so you, you cannot get pregnant um, in that period, three days after until your first first over your period um mm. everything is like closed <laughs> and there's like a mucus plug for want of a better yes. word it's like a plug yeah really yeah. cool <laughs> and like, the, yeah amazing. it's amazing it's incredible and um the egg white you know everything dries up I mean literally um you don't have much discharge at all um so yeah so for example I went from 36.4 to 36.7 mm. And then, but obviously you can have spikes, you can have anomalies. So you've got to do it for three days. So you know mm. it has stained for three days and then you know, okay, I'm good to go. Mm. Okay. Um, and I think also that is, that can be challenging for, for, because I have, because I'm doing this, I've got to through the lens of, because I, because I have ADHD, I think that's where it can be quite interesting as well. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll perhaps we'll do a deep dive on this, Judah, because it's so interesting. But it's also yeah. having that consistency of temping. Um, it's also lots of things like how stressed you've been, sleep. Like the other day I did mine and I was like, I've only slept for like four and a half hours. I, I rarely sleep that little anymore because I'm just, it takes me like two days to recover. But actually we recorded the, uh, the we re-recorded episode one and we were both like a bit, bit zombie. I know I was a bit of a zombie, I was so sleepy. <laughs> Um, but it can, that can also affect your, um, you know, your uh, temperature and things. So there's lots of like yes. variation. Actually, I cover it a little bit in the Ready Study chart, but the free guide that I've got. So that's quite a nice one for kind of starting into it. Um, mm. And there's always just so much to learn. Like, yeah, the two decimal points things. 
don't think I knew that so that's really cool to, to know about yeah. um but yes yeah thank you so because so Julia kind of looked at it for a slightly or came at it all for a slightly different lens so it's just interesting to see and hear about that as well um but yeah so it's yeah it's can you say you maybe what ovulation is like what's happening yeah so ovulation we really are kind of in this um beautiful like it's like a full moon you know it's like when we have the full moon in the sky so we're like um we kind of have the the testosterone um we have a little bit of testosterone kind of either coming in or rising um, i don't really know enough about testosterone i'll be honest with you but we get the testosterone coming and we've also got we've had the estrogen rising from um in a spring so as our um bleeders kind of uh, starts to stop we've had the estrogen kind of starting to rise but in a spring and then i think claire baker who's really fantastic um she's just great she's got a really great book i think it's called 50 things to know about periods um and but she's also really great she's got a you know instagram and stuff and really cool but she um she calls it i think it's her that calls it the beyonce hormones um or the beyonce <laughs> cocktail or something because it's like you, know, you got you get the testosterone and you but you also get that with the the rising estrogen so together you're like yeah you're like sasha fierce beyonce on stage um which is really really cool <laughs> i love it i was like yes beyonce hormones so that <laughs> so that's really <laughs> what's happening um with our bodies um and yeah and and actually i guess speaking of, of claire as well um she has this coined term called menstrual shadows um mm. which she's spoken about a little bit on her instagram as well and it's kind of looking at um i guess like the shadow side of each of the, the phases each of the seasons mm -hmm. um, and i think it's really interesting with ovulation because i feel like this is getting talked about a little bit more and more because ovulation tends to be that time you know our beyonce time so we'll probably feel like really wanting to be extroverted wanting to be out there wanting to be visible blah blah blah, blah. um but there's a lot of challenges that come with that as well and sometimes i think part of the challenge is thinking that we should be this way a bit like maybe an introvert in an extrovert world thinking that we have to be all out there and we have to be this expression of our cycle and actually we really feel very very different and sometimes we feel different probably because there's some kind of um, imbalance somewhere in our lives whether that's emotionally mentally physically spiritually um so it's quite interesting and, and claire yeah kind of coins this as, as menstrual shadows um so i thought we'd maybe deep deep dive a little bit into that julia to be honest that sounds good yeah on um, another another episode mm. well yeah. i thought yeah we'll, we'll cover a, a little bit of it now i guess because um but yeah definitely like in another episode but i thought we will go over a few bits i'll just read out um some of these are sort of ones i've put in claire has a lot more but i've just kind of grabbed a couple that i felt were quite um were kind of resonating with adhd and also my experience yes. and then i'd love to speak with you julia about maybe what your experience has been of population um so yeah there was a few things to touch okay. on so um one of them was um infertility which i thought was interesting because obviously i am not um, i'm actively not trying to get pregnant well i don't really have a problem i'm not there's no man in the picture there's no there's no sperm in the picture so i'm not really even actively trying not to it's just not really happening which is fine i know julia is uh you know practicing fertility awareness um not um, but of course some people are wanting to get pregnant and an ovulation is can be a really difficult time um for that uh, because there can be a lot of pressure that we perhaps put on ourselves this isn't really speaking from my own personal experience it's more just listening to the podcast other people's conversations um a little bit like menstruation can be really difficult because if you're bleeding and you really want to get pregnant that's obviously not you know not what you want to be seeing not what you, what you want to be experiencing um so there is kind of that that side to it there's also um and these kind of the rest of them i felt really sort of um i could relate to quite a lot so i'm just going to read them off but we've got doing too much uh scatty <laughs> i might have added in scatty actually <laughs> um fatigue overwhelm feeling like the energy is just way too big um feeling disconnected um and then claire i really like these abandoning the self and unable to receive so that was really interesting because i think 
I do feel if I'm not careful that I do disconnect and I do abandon the self a bit in inner summer because I don't have the introverted um, reflective part that comes out in inner autumn and inner winter so I'm less likely to like want a journal for example but at the moment there's literally just bullet points of my, the date and then uh my temp because I'm like I don't want to sit down I can't sit down long enough to journal you know <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's quite interesting so I try and do put a few bullet points um but I can always tell when I'm yeah ovulating because I just don't I can't sit still um and it's tricky to like yeah not not let that scattiness kind of take over and I think especially with the ADHD there's all of this energy and as we've heard a million times in the ADHD community, there's all of this potential, you know, and it needs to go on the thing. And if you're not sure what the thing is, like I wasn't earlier this year, it's really blooming frustrating because I've got all this energy and I'm like, I just want to put it to good use. And where's it going? Um, so that could be quite a big kind of challenge. Um, so I don't know, Julia, if you can relate to any of that. I know you haven't been looking so much using sort of the seasons for that long but you obviously have been practicing um fam so maybe you maybe you notice more in ovulation and perhaps especially other times because yeah you know, for it. I would can you hear me okay I can I feel like I've my video I think is a bit laggy I don't know if can you hear me oh, okay. okay oh yeah perfectly okay perfectly. good um yeah so I, I would say before I learn about the seasons um the fam said kind of splits the cycle into three parts um okay. so uh, and <laughs> they usually use a traffic light system oh, so, you, so you have, so you you have and, well it dep <laughs> depending yeah depending on whether you want to get pregnant or not so I don't want to get pregnant so I would so the start of your cycle is is the first day of your period and that is the amber <laughs> that's the amber oh. period so um you can have unprotected sex if you want, but it's a little bit risky because sperm mm. can live inside the womb for seven days. And if you have an early ovulation, yes, that, yes. That sperm still like hanging out, like mm -hmm. oh, look, it's open, let's go in. Let's swim in. Um, <laughs> swim, swim, swim. So um Just keep swimming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that is the little sperm song. Um yeah, so. So it is a little bit risky. So it's advised um, like you use some sort of protection in that amber period. And then when you have this, the the red period. So if you're not trying to get pregnant, this is the red period. If you are trying to get pregnant, it's the green. Mm, um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, of course, but, yeah. But for me, it's the red. So then you go into red, which is, is you should really not have sex. Like mm. even with a because you are so ready to receive this sperm um, that it's highly likely um, you could get pregnant in that period. And then when I talked about that temperature shift, those three days is are when you're actually ovulating. So the eggs being released and those are your most fertile days. So you should mm. really like do anything else. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, and then, <laughs> just don't think about it even um and then you go into the green period which is when you are mm. infertile you could you you know you can't get pregnant um and you so you can have unprotected sex if you so desire mm. um so I actually knew the cycle initially with three stages so yeah so I'm very aware of those three stages and I'm kind of like reconfiguring it into a, a seasonal cycle as well but mm. my experience of, of ovulation is yeah like you have you have a lot of energy and you have like I personally have a lot of like desire to you know have sex <laughs> because yeah. you know your body's like I'm ready to roll baby yeah <laughs> oh I have to tell you something funny in a minute carry on because I want to listen to what you're, you're saying where you just reminded me of something yeah, but um, I was also, I think I briefly mentioned this on one of the other episodes is um, I was listening to this podcast 28-ish days later, which I have said mentioned before as well. And they were talking about um, that some, pe some people who menstruate on the day the egg gets, so it's only one day that the egg actually gets released. Mm. And some people are feel pain on that day. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. So I do, I have one day where I feel a kind of like, 
it's like a period cramp but it's very mild so it's not it's i'm called, not um i think yeah it's called and i'm probably going to butcher this because it's german but i think it's mit mittel <laughs> mittelschmerz <laughs> <laughs> I, I can love say it when I don't think about how to say it. Mittelschmerz, I think, is how you say it. But it's like middle pain. And we, we don't yeah. have a word for it, but it's basically like yeah. little ovulation cramps. Yeah. Really interesting. So I actually do get that. So mm. I actually have this period, this like peak where I actually feel a little bit like, oh, what is happening to me? So I I that I guess it's the kind of shadow for me is that yeah. I always one day where I'm a little bit crampy and I'm a little bit like and now I know what it is which is quite nice mm. um to just have a name for it the middle yeah. yeah 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 it's so cool yeah it's so bizarre and actually I'll come we'll come back to that in a second but um before I forget because you were, we were talking about ovulation and um I actually had so I today had two people compliment me on my voice and I thought it was so funny because I thought, oh, it's just because I'm ovulating. And they're both men. And it just made me chuckle. And um, ah. one of them was like right at the end of a call because I, I do. I work with customer services I'm on the phones. And um, and this guy was like, uh, and I, ironically, I was kind of thinking, oh, God, his voice is like so miserable. <laughs> like, <laughs> <you're> up, love. <laughs> and, um, and then right at the end of the call, uh, and uh, he was like, oh, by the way, you, I, know, I know that you're working. And I was like, yeah. And he was like. You just you've got you've got a really you've got a really nice voice and I was like thank you and you know like I'm not sure if you're like being flirty or if you're like just telling me a compliment yeah like, this is really odd so I was like oh yeah well yeah just trying to just trying to do my job well <laughs> <laughs> but it made me chuckle because when we're ovulating our body does um our body does like our, our face becomes like more symmetrical because you see that classically beautiful well not even classically beautiful I think it's like scientifically you know yes has the most I don't know it's that third thing isn't it? Know, faces, but, yeah. yes yes yeah. yeah and lots of things happening so you know the skin's a little bit shinier I'm always thinking like you know um you know how people are like with with pregnant women how they have a glow and it's <laughs> like oh would that be is that like you know a little hint of that is that ovulation you know yeah, but yeah. it's just interesting that you know everything seems and shinier. smell we smell and smell oh oh yeah. which we should just do a little tangent of for a moment mm -hmm. and I talk about this a lot in my ADHD PMDD and the pill workshop which is on my website and you can you can buy it um and we do and I actually talk a bit more about um the yeah about the um like one of a better word like mucus plug and stuff like that and in, in terms of like fertility but um, just kind of touching on the pill and what it does because obviously that's not my you know, area of expertise but a lot of people asking questions and one of the things I found really interesting was that when we when you take the pill um, things like that change because you're obviously because it stops you or it, yeah it kind of puts a halt for the for the ovulation it even affects the way you smell so for example if you're on the pill and you meet a person and you're attracted to them and you start going out da -da -da -da. a lot of people have even said when they've gone off the pill with their partners to get pregnant they've completely realized they don't fancy their partners and a lot of that is because it's to do with your pheromones because your pheromones change um we're more likely to fancy someone who is more um um who looks more I think it's more I think someone who look if so, if we're on the pill we're more likely to be attracted to someone that looks more similar to us and is if you're looking for like a man you're more likely to be attracted to a more more like masculine more feminine features whereas if you are off the pill you are more likely to fancy someone who's got more masculine features and looks less like you I think it's to do with the gene pool on like a, a level. But I, went, I go into it in that workshop because I was like full of all of this, like I just mm -hmm. went down a massive rabbit hole. But it was really interesting. Um, but yeah, but we do it. So, it's, so the pill and, and ovulation, because because what the pill does for ovulation does affect, affect even who we are like primarily uh, attracted to. And also, yeah, the pheromones and everything. So it's really like, it's quite mm. scary in some ways when you think about, you know, not scary being on the world. Well, I think it's actually quite scary because we just don't know a lot about it if you know about it then it's fine but it's just interesting yeah down that rabbit hole but um yeah but I was just thinking about how mm. I was like oh well it's probably just because I'm ovulating so you know <laughs> I'm ready for babies <laughs> um, 
for coming back to Julie, what you were saying about mental <laughs> stress. Yeah. And this is why, can you guys see why, like, as I, you know, the more, like, ovulation is bothering, I'm like, oh, like, scatty, like, I find it so, um, I'd love, like, any feedback from any ADHD is, like, if you've noticed this as well, because it's, like, all of the energy, but, like, just kind of keep yourself like, so well. Um, but the middle spurts and, like, the, yeah, having that kind of, um, not negative, but the, the, but the shadow sides, um, I, I was, um, I was thinking about this and I, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure I saw it through Claire's and I think we mentioned it um in maybe on maybe on the last episode that we recorded Julian or well, it might have been the winter one but we were talking about how it, you can have a little rest a little pause in in a summer just because in my brain and I think I did this last in a summer um because I didn't have as much uh, rest as I would have liked on in a winter basically I would just like the whole in a winter to be me you know, lying naked on a seashell and cherubs just feeding me grapes. And if I can't have that, it's not enough. <laughs> um, but I had like a nice cacao ceremony last in a summer. Um, and I just, so which is just something I really enjoy in my, in autumn, late in autumn or, or my bleed. And, um, and it was really nice. And I was like, oh, I must like just slow down a little bit. And I'm sure Claire kind of, Claire says, is that there's a quote that I, I snatched from Instagram and it says, I have much I have much more to say on this but basically it's okay to rest at ovulation ovulation slash please take a summer summer holiday slash you don't have to achieve all the things in your 30s I thought that's brilliant (laughs) (laughs) oh well that's just a quote from Claire Baker's page but I thought yeah it it is okay and it I'm sure somewhere I'm, I'm sure she had like a name for it as well which I thought that's great but it's just a reminder that you know we do have but obviously, like at Christmas, you have your Christmas holidays, you do have a break in, in the darkest of winter during Yule. And we do have summer holidays when it's really hot winter, summer solstice, you know, there's, you know kids are on holidays and things. So it is important, I think, to, to have those two kind of poles of inner summer and inner winter where we do really rest in inner winter. Actually, maybe if inner winter, if that's deep rest, maybe the opposite of, of, of deep rest isn't fucking mental scattery action. <laughs> maybe it's aligned action or also just taking a pause right it doesn't have to be it oh well we're resting here so we have to be like doing all the things here I think it's aligned action um or just yeah taking a bit of time you know to have a little pause and maybe more of the stuff is getting done which I think probably for me is probably in the inner spring and the inner autumn as we're kind of planning in those sort of more um maybe more dynamic seasons you know kind of got that urge to plan in the spring you are kind of slowing your role in the inner autumn but there's also kind of that inner the inner critic can flare up and you just want to edit the bejeebus out of everything so there is a bit more I think movement then whereas actually in a winter you do want to rest and maybe in a summer maybe you do want to physically you know move and, and do a bit more exercise but maybe it's um yeah and it's maybe a different type of pause you know um what do you think Julia? Yeah, I think I may have mentioned this before, but I think my last summer, the, yeah, I think I was aware that I was in my summer and um, I thought, right, okay, I'm going to do all the things because it's my summer. So that's the time to do the things. And then I was like, I actually, today, I just want to just chill and watch Bridgerton. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yes, you did. You meant, and, yeah, you did mention that. Yeah. 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 And I and, and I was like, and I remember this red rule that you, mm. which is everybody's experience is different, and it's not yeah. we're not all supposed to fit into these you know boxes. So so mm. yeah, so I think that was it was it was nice to acknowledge that. It's yeah, like, in yeah, summer, but yeah. You can have a sit down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm definitely guilty of it. I kind of think, and especially I think you know with with the PMDD. I kind of think oh god I've got to get the stuff done before my energy really tanks because it kind of can feel like that and yes I'm doing practices to sort of slow the roll and hopefully not have it completely you know go overboard but it it does take you know it's going to take a few cycles to to practice that to, to practice slowing down mm-hmm. and pra- probably years to do that um, yeah. and yeah I think it's just yeah it's good to remind ourselves that yeah we don't have to be you know go 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 and um, we're still allowed to kind of take mm-hmm. that pause um yeah 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 so I love that I think that's really do cool. we 
Do we have a, a goddess who can help us? Yeah, yeah. I was kind of thinking so. Um, yeah, companion goddesses is what Julia was calling them, and I think like, I love this. So, um, yeah, I actually have Kuan Yin, and she is the goddess of compassion. Um, so I'm going to go into that a little bit more. Um, in my in my guides that I have coming up soon, which is um cycles and seasons, or seasons and cycles, probably seasons and cycles. Um, but um, and I'll I'll go into that a little bit more, and I'd like to do a little yeah, a little page on them and um. And I'd love to do some actual practices with them um, as kind of workshops and things. So there'll be some cool yeah. stuff coming. But yeah, I think Kuan Yin, the goddess of compassion, I think, again, that kind of goes with what we're saying as well, is that like, you know, it's okay to just um, give ourselves that self-compassion and just allow ourselves to, you know, have a little, um, have a little summer holly bobs, you know, <laughs> when we're now in the summer. Aligned action, oh, definitely. But also, you know, we're all going on our summer holly bobs a little bit and that's okay as well especially in that you know as an antidote to the the hustle culture I think um yeah. you know I think that's really important and take a bit of time for yourself if you can you know or maybe with some family or whatever you know whatever it is that, that feels good but you know um I had a really nice long bath yesterday and then I you know just did did my nails just like you know mm -hmm. you just do all the buffing and stuff and I was like god I just really want to buff my nails and I was like so sure, just do it you know that was great and I was like oh this is so nice and wash my hair and you know just feel like squeaky clean and that was just a little thing that normally I'd find it quite hard actually to sit still but I was like oh I really just feel like doing that thing today <laughs> so it yeah. doesn't have to yeah it doesn't have to be all you know the other the things on the to-do list um yeah yeah so yeah but yeah I'd say Kuan Yin yeah nice I, I I also think that um so we were talking about how our our hormone changes change how we are perceived mm. but also how we perceive so um <laughs> east estrogen is quite kind of well all the hormones are kind of magic but estrogen is like quite magic because because things become softer and I have noticed this as well like you don't get bothered by stuff as much yes so it's actually 100%. it's actually a really good time to like do things that might annoy you in mm. in, in autumn or winter um yeah. maybe you're not ready for in spring but in summer it's like all right bring it on like mm. I've got the I've got the the estrogen has risen like yeah you know, estrogen I'm ready. Has risen. <laughs> I'm oh, ready. No. <laughs> um so yeah so things yeah things are softer people look nicer like mm. you give things a lot more um yeah but more so, like, yeah compassion and just yeah people so will irritate exactly. me less when I'm at work exactly <laughs> yeah. Phones, I, like, mm. yeah mm. I love that compassion that's what made me yes. think of it is like that's that's such a great goddess because you it's like a time when you can be more compassionate to yourself mm. as well, but yeah to others around and it you just comes well. more yeah yeah and it just comes more naturally I think it's almost yeah. like in in a summer it's like it's easy to be um outwardly compassionate and then I think in, in yeah. autumn it's kind of taking that lesson and then giving yourself that inner compassion so I think autumn's quite can be quite challenging to do that so I think it's like oh practicing yeah practice with Kuan Yin you know in in a, in a summer and it's, it just comes so easily and then once you start a bit more slowly slowly it will seep into other parts of your cycle you know um mm -hmm. a bit like I guess with um our companion goddess who I won't name yet but we'll who we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll speak about in an autumn we could argue that you know she's fantastic um and you could also use the lessons that you learn with her to not over not over give in your inner summer right so not uh, you know having those having still having some boundaries because even if we feel like right. we have all this endless energy um you know we can we can perhaps still over give or not and not leave enough in the tank for ourselves which we can do that much more in inner summer because it's much more natural to do and we do have like the superwoman powers of like you know doing all of the things um but that is also very celebrated in society so it might be like you might be feeling harsh on yourself for not being able to do that sometimes I even get a little bit sad and I'm like oh man. Like, even, I had a moment earlier this morning and I was like oh I just wish I could feel like this like all throughout my cycle and I was like well a you don't <laughs> b you'd be a lot more okay with that if you were doing 
you know, if I was working by my in my own thing that I want to be doing, which I'm slowly building up to full time, yeah. or or if I was working in a company, well, not a company, but I guess if I was working in a society that valued the cycles rather than because you know, if I didn't have to show up in the same way which you don't obviously, obviously but it kind of feels like you do because there's still a level of you know mm. you're breathing really loud and annoying me can you stop please uh, you know <laughs> um, <laughs> it's interesting yeah. and it might be kind of almost mourning a little bit you know in a week's time some of this stuff is going to irritate me and it's kind of it irritates me that it's going to irritate me but um, <laughs> so again we yeah, are practicing that that compassion so yeah. yeah a little bit of a little bit of Kwan Yin there I think is um is pretty yeah, pretty cool. Pretty good mix. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, Did shall we, we, um, we wrap up? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that I don't know if there's anything else that you want to add, Julia. Anything that pops to mind? I think I think also I think also what's good to remember is it's also all right to be fabulous. So like <laughs> Oh, we'll just say that again because like, it it's, it's also it's also all right to be and then it froze <laughs> oh no it's <laughs> it's also all right to be fabulous oh so, i love that yeah it is also yeah, yeah. also if you want to be fabulous yeah yeah be fabulous be, be yeah. beyonce yeah be cool. beyonce oh um, yeah just enjoy it yeah and i yeah. think that's so, so we are celebrated in our you know maiden ovulation phase but we're also told to like you know turn it down and like mm. don't be too um women and people who identify as as women um but I think you know own that I think you know like listen to Beyonce yeah. listen to Lizzo you yeah. know like, I think women are really like they're all their songs are about like I'm amazing yeah. and, they have no, and no apologies about it but I think it's also like a nice time to practice embracing that which is quite hard in today's society but yeah yeah take up space embrace that yeah oh my god yeah all the space yeah all of it <laughs> yeah be loud. I like be that. loud take up the space yeah be loud take up the space <laughs> don't apologize yeah yeah exactly no apology needed you know no Go for it. absolutely oh. Do we have yeah, a, that's do my we have a, um, do we have a catchphrase for this one i'm trying to think if we have a i mean we have i suppose we have to take up space i feel like it's not quite sparkly as, as i'd like it to be we can always <laughs> we can always let it like simmer a little bit it might it might pop through you know next, i think next time they usually i feel like they usually emerge mm. in the next you know season like once they've had time to kind of yeah I feel like the other ones as well actually to be fair I think Inner Spring kind of popped up as we were kind of going well I already had the idea of the hatchling in my brain mm. and um I'd already had the idea of the, the slow you roll and the other the other bit so we'll see what we'll see what emerges we'll see what emerges yeah um, yeah all right then well um I love how dark my room looks now yeah um, I also yeah. feel like it's getting very dark <laughs> yeah yeah it's a bit nuts um oh my computer's making noises at me again um but yeah we will um we will have our next live we'll um choose something from this conversation probably to just kind of delve into a little bit more um and that will be oh i think that's next thursday isn't it julia thursday the, I'm gonna say the 11th that might just be this mm. instagram so I can't even read now. Yeah, it's the eleventh. Eleventh is okay. So yeah, so we'll do a little live on Instagram, but it will it'll be yeah a little nugget from this, and I guess we'll bring it we'll bring it to the people, and maybe there'll be some more uh, discussion like there was last time, which was really cool. Um, mm. But otherwise, yeah, you can catch this. Um, well, I'm not quite sure yet. Yeah, it might be in my email list, and um, it'll probably be up be as a sort of a YouTube link at the moment as a as a private link, um, and. Um, plans are underfoot I'd like to make this more of a podcast so I'm just sort of looking at where to host it basically so I'm just saving the um the videos and the sound bites but um yeah I think um yeah so next right. next time will be episode four in autumn I think that's going to be juicy because uh, there's so many challenges I think and I think awesome is is known for its challenges um and it's probably the season I've come to love the most 
uh, because of those challenges. So it'll be interesting to explore uh, oh. that. Yeah. So um, right. yeah, I'm quite excited. If any of you are listening slash seeing this who have downloaded, I've had, oh my gosh, I've had I think 70 downloads of the uh, PMDD ADHD and me guide. Amazing. Really, really cool. And some really great feedback. One lady was saying that she wants she would love it to be in all the uh like the doctor's waiting rooms and everything else. She was like, it's so it's so good. So really cool feedback as well. But if you're listening uh to this and you've you've got that, please listen to episode four in autumn because that will really serve you if you have PMDD. We'll we'll do a whole episode on it another time, but it will be really um really fruitful I think so yeah so I think thanks Julia for joining me and um no we'll see you guys in the next episode play right. some outro music gonna <laughs> out. la, 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 la. bye <laughs>